On December 26 of 1996, John Bonet, a six-year-old female victim, was examined by Dr. John Mayer at approximately 8.20 p.m. in Boulder, Colorado. He conducted the initial result where he discovered that the female victim was on her back with her hands extended over her head and her head turned to the right of her body. The body was found at 15th Street in Boulder, Colorado. Dr. Mayer was present at the brief initial examination and gave the initial results of John Bonet. The results included that there were ligature marks around her neck, right wrist of the body, and there was also a small abrasion below her right ear and another abrasion on the left side of her neck. Dr. Mayer left the residence at approximately 8.30 p.m. On the next day, December 27th of 1996, the autopsy on the six-year-old female victim, John Bonet, was conducted by Dr. John Mayer. John Bonet's height was approximately 47 inches, and she weighed approximately 45 pounds at the time of her examination. The cause of death was concluded to be asphyxiation by strangulation associated with the craniosacral trauma. The manner of death was considered to be undetermined, however, the case was processed as a homicide. The location and time of the autopsy was not reported within the autopsy report. Evidence to the six-year-old female victim included various areas to her external as well as her internal parts of her body. The internal parts of her body concluded that there had been a sexual assault associated with the crime. There were small amounts of dry blood in her labia maiora, and there were similar amounts in her vestibule. There were faint violet discoloration present on the right labia maiora and a minimal amount of semi-liquid red fluid that was part present in her vaginal vault. Injuries to her face included a rusted color abrasion located on her lower right ear. There is less than one millimeter hemorrhaging in several areas of her face, which included the lower left eyelid, the upper eyelid, as well as the, on the left cheek and as well as the left upper eyelid. Her injuries on her neck included a deep ligature that were encircled and hurt over her entire neck. The victim, the victim's mark crossed through the midline of the neck just below the area that is considered to be the Adam's apple. The next area that contained a hemorrhaging, the next area on the neck that had contained the hemorrhaging and abrasions were approximately three by two inches in size. Similar hemorrhaging is present in the furrow mark on the left aspect of the neck. It is to be noted that the tongue bone was to be found intact. There were no injuries found on the liver, however, there were different injuries found on her heart and lungs. The heart contained scattered hemorrhaging over the anterior surface of the heart, and the lungs contained occasional scattered subpleural hemorrhaging on the surface of each lung. There were a number of injuries found to the skull and brain. And there was an extensive area of the scalp hemorrhaging along with the right temporal area that extended from the, from the orbital ridge to the optical area. One of the fractures, there is roughly a rectangular shaped displacement fragment of the skull. The top right temporal lobe contained a similar purple contusion where there was very minimal contusions present on the tip of the left temporal lobe. There were several linear hemorrhages present on the anterior of the left shoulder. On the lower back, there had been two dried rust to slightly purple colored abrasions. And lastly, on the posterior aspect of the left lower leg, there midline are two small scratch-like abrasions which are dry and rusted and colored. Evidence that had been collected included fibers from the clothing and the body surfaces, ligature clothing, vaginal, rectal, oral swabs and smears, paper bags from the hands and feet, fingernail clippings, jewelry, white body bag, sample of the head hair, eyelashes and eyebrows, swab of the left and right thighs, red and purple top, swabs of the left and right thighs, fibers and hair from the clothing and body surfaces, which are class characteristics for possible suspects. Reasoning behind taking the evidence was the items that were collected for touch DNA included the ligatures and clothing. Items that were collected for DNA were the vaginal, rectal, oral swaps and smears, the fingernail clippings, and the swaps from the left and right thighs. 
The items collected for hair and fibers included the paper bags from the hair from the hands. Items collected for hair and fibers included paper bags from the hands and feet and the white body bag. In conclusion, it was predicted that someone close to her had killed her and she had died from the injuries to her head, but the determination of the, what caused the injuries remain unknown.